So what is climate change? So what is climate change? Really? What is this, news round? I'm Jonathan Pye, I'm not John Craven. What is climate change? Cars burn oil, guff CO2 out their a-holes, planet heats up, ice caps melt, sea levels rise, Bangladesh drowns. The end. What? Yeah, OK, OK, some flooding in the UK. Only the nice bits, Tim. I live in Shadwell. It's fine. You know who gets flooded in this country? Posh people with converted basements. Oh, no, the games room's fucked. Fuck them. I live on the fifth floor and I don't own a car. Yes, she got custody of that as well. Yep, OK. COP26 Glasgow. Some are calling it our last best hope for a solution to the climate crisis. Around the world. What essentially Boris Johnson was saying is that whilst this deforestation pledge isn't legally binding, it's ultimately the consumer who will be putting pressure on governments and businesses to ensure that they meet their climate pledges. No, no that's not right. It, it's not up to me to write a strongly worded email to my local Tesco Metro to ask them to stop selling products of palm oil from palm trees that stand in a place formerly known as the Brazilian rainforest. That's, that's international trading standards responsibility, palm oil. And so, you know, palm oil that goes in my fucking shampoo and conditioner and my peanut butter and my toothpaste and my butter substitute whilst decimating the natural habitat of some long forgotten monkey. Oh, well, people won't stand for not having palm oil in their shampoo and conditioner. I would. I don't want shit in my hair that means a monkey lost its tree. I don't want a low-fat alternative to butter on my toast if it means four species of frog were extinguished out of existence. And if it did, I want to know about it before I buy it. This killed a frog. Clearly on the package. That's what they're all here for. It's not up to me. Whereas I don't, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what sort of thing I'm supposed to be... You know, I know I'm supposed to be recycling. I know that. No, no plastic straws. I know that uh, cotton buds are out and, you know, my ears are filthy, so I don't know what I'm supposed to do. It's micro-consumerist bollocks, really. Exactly. Micro what? At what point am I going to be stood here, looking down the barrel of this lens, reading this auto cue, reading whatever crap it is you tell me to say, reading the news... Good evening. Earlier today, the last fish was caught. That, that's it. There's no more. There's no more fish. That was the last one. Now let's let's go to a live link and watch Jeff Bezos eat it. You know, at what point am I going to be stood here reporting? It's done. It's pointless. You you can chop them all down if you want. You can just start. You can you can just go shit directly in the river if you want. It's all fucked. Won't make any difference if you do or you don't. Save yourself the bother of flushing. Fill your boots. Fuck the frogs. Fuck the frogs. You can literally fuck the frogs if you like. If you can find one. You, you can just start feeding your dog fucking plastic now. It's, oh, it's fucking over. At, at what point will I be stood here saying that? Because that moment seems not very far away. Yeah. <clears throat> Joining me now... Tim, if the government can make people scared of a virus, scared for their health, scared to death, of death, so that entire nations are afraid to step outside their door, then you can make people afraid of an oncoming catastrophic climate failure which will extinguish almost every member of every species on this planet, including our own. If it's that easy to get entire nations to pay their citizens to stay at home for a year, sit in their pants watching Tiger King and learn how to bake soda bread and learn to hate their children and pay them to do it, then yes, you can stop subsidising carbon emitters. You can persuade half the nation to cut their meat intake by half. Oh, people won't stand for less meat in their diet. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. If we can spend trillions bailing out banks from their own greed and mistakes, trillions subsidising the banking industry with taxpayers' money, then they can subsidise the fishing industry to stop catching so much fish. They can subsidise farmers to not tear down the rainforest. They can stop subsidising fossil fuels to the tune of $11 million a minute. They can stop that today. They can do it right now. That's what they came here to do.
the question, but, but what happened today could be described as a catastrophic failure of international diplomacy. Yes, there were a few platitudes and dozens of promises that no one has to keep because they never do. We will continue to pollute our skies and oceans past the edge of mass extinction. We are not going to incentivize Brazil or Indonesia in any real meaningful way to stop chopping down the rainforest so that we can have nice hair conditioner. And when it comes to fossil fuels, business is booming. We are staring down the barrel of a catastrophic 2.4 degree increase in global temperatures. And whilst countries are scrambling to tell us what a huge success this COP summit was, there's a feeling here that this was a missed opportunity. One wonders how many more missed opportunities this planet can take. Time will tell. Jonathan Pye, COP26, Glasgow.